Deep brain stimulation involves the placing of leads in specific areas of the brain. These leads have a number of contacts through which an electrical current can be passed, thus stimulating an area deep within the brain. The leads are connected to wires which run down the neck to a neurostimulator or pulse generator which is typically implanted in the chest. This device can then be programmed to provide symptomatic relief. As with any surgery, there are risks. Risks of brain surgery include complications such as coma, hemorrhage, seizures, stroke, breathing problems, heart problems and infection. Complications associated with this operation are impressively low, however. At the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery in London, where I have my operation, the rate of infection following DBS is less than 1% over the last two years. The rate of hemorrhaging within 30 days of the operation is 0%, compared to just 2% worldwide. The risks may be low, but if hemorrhaging occurs, then the consequent complications can be severe and permanent. There are also side effects related to DBS, some of which are seldom or never mentioned to prospective patients, or which may be glossed over or mentioned in passing. The intention of this video is not to be negative about the life-changing surgery, but simply to present information so that people can make informed choices or have questions to put to the neurologist or consultant. This video is not in any way definitive. It is based upon responses from people who have had the operation and replied to an online inquiry from me asking if they had had any side effects or effects which they hadn't expected and whether they would have DBS again given what they know now. Some of the reported side effects of DBS are numbness or tingling sensations, muscle tightness of the face or arm, speech and swallowing problems, balance and gait problems, worsening of some motor symptoms, apathy or disinterest, hallucinations, confusion, compulsive or impulsive behaviour, increased libido, impaired judgement and cognitive dysfunction, depression, mania, panic attacks, lightheadedness, dizziness, voyeurism, suicidal tendencies and attempts. Most of these side effects can be moderated or eliminated through programming of the neurostimulator. The side effects that are most common are to do with speech, balance and gait, which most people were informed about prior to their procedure. My own speech has been affected and can become strangled, indistinct or slurred, husky and weak, and occasionally my voice disappears altogether, usually when I'm tired. Balance is another common issue, and I'm certainly more unsteady since my DBS, but not to the extent that I'm having falls. My walking is also more stilted than before. Many other people are less fortunate. Surgery-induced dyskinesia is something that I suffer from, and was not mentioned to me prior to my operation. It isn't that debilitating, but it can be a bloody nuisance. It can also be avoided by the careful programming of your neurostimulator. However, I find that the settings that give me the maximum relief from tremor are also the settings which provoke the dyskinesia. Another side effect that I and many others experienced was the recovery of my appetite and consequent weight gain. I was told after my operation that most DBS patients put on weight afterwards. I'm not sure that increased appetite alone is responsible for this, but it's definitely a side effect of DBS. Impulsive behaviour, I was told, was a possible side effect of the dopamine agonists that I was once prescribed. I wasn't told until after my surgery that it was also a side effect of DBS. Another DBS patient described this as a lack of filtering of my thoughts and words, or, as her neurosurgeon put it, DBS can lower your inhibitions. That was certainly the case for me as well. I told one of the DBS team an extremely crude joke, certainly not the sort of thing I would have normally said to somebody I hardly knew. I was euphoric, and my laugh had a slightly manic quality to it. In my case, a few tweaks to my device programming sorted things out, but at the expense of some of the tremor control. Some patients mentioned disturbance of vision, and I've certainly struggled with some blurred vision, although I hadn't specifically related it to, to DBS. One patient reported functional blindness for 60 to 70% of the time due to blepharospasm, or eye dystonia, where there is sustained involuntary closing of the eyelids. He described it as a trade-off for tremor control. Another patient said, I was able to have sex with my wife again. Prior to this, I hadn't found any mention about DBS affecting sexual dysfunction, but did manage to find out there had been a study which concluded that 
DBS of the subthalamic nucleus appears to affect sexual functioning in a small but positive way. Male patients with Parkinson's disease, especially when under 60, appeared more satisfied with their sexual well-being over a short-term follow-up period. A number of patients were surprised to regain a substantial amount of fine movement control in their hands, me included, which enabled them to write clearly again. I could sign my name once more and it actually looked like my signature. Depression wasn't specifically mentioned by any respondent, but is accepted as a side effect of DBS, and I've read that the incidence amongst DBS patients is over 45%. This is a side effect that I was warned about prior to surgery. I noticed that I was wheezing a lot following my operation. When I mentioned this to the DBS team, they said that it wasn't a side effect of the operation, but it is something that I didn't have beforehand, and which persists to this day. Lightheadedness or dizziness was mentioned by one respondent, and I hadn't heard of that one before. I did, however, find it listed as a side effect on another website. Back pain caused by muscle contractions was also reported by a number of respondents, and this is also something that I have experienced. In my case, it was resolved by adjusting the settings of my neurostimulator. One person had an allergic reaction to a component of the battery, which isn't, strictly speaking, a side effect, more of an unexpected complication, but worthy of a mention. Cognitive impairment is an issue that has affected some people to a large extent, forcing them to abandon their careers due to thought processing speed issues, fluency of speech, memory and word loss problems. Milder cognitive impairment can still prove debilitating, affecting executive function, which encompasses such things as inhibition, emotional control, working memory, initiation of tasks and planning and organisation, and affecting fluency of thought and speech. More than once, someone has cited as a major unexpected side effect, the cessation of constipation. For myself, my tremor was the main focus and all other symptoms were irrelevant, so it came as a big surprise to find that my slowness of movement had been positively affected. Muscle stiffness was improved, as was my mood, but all of these things are variable and depend upon the programming of my device. I was surprised by the positive responses to my question about whether you would have DBS again, knowing what you know now. Even those who had had less than perfect outcomes were not hesitant. And the general consensus was, yes, I'll have DBS again in a heartbeat. It's given me back my life. I have one reply of not sure from someone who suffered severe cognitive impairment. And one person who suffered major surgical complications said that they wished they'd never had the surgery. One comment summed up the general consensus of opinion. It's allowed me to live life not just watch it pass me by. Thanks for watching my video. I'd very much appreciate it if you would click on the like button underneath the video window and click below to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this.